Now, we just talked about interest compounding in times per year. And we said, well, one time a year is yearly. We mentioned that. I shouldn't say we didn't write it down. Uh, we did quarterly, that's four times per year. Monthly, that's 12 times per year. That's the, the most common times per year. But you could imagine that we compound interest daily. It'd be about 365 times per year. Or what about hourly? We do 365 times 24 hours, so 365 times 24, whatever that happens to be. What if we did it by every second of every day? Well, now we're getting into compounding what's called continually. When you compound continually, that means you're always compounding, all right? Compounding. Continually means we're always compounding. So what would you do for compounding continually? Well, it turns out we need a new number if we're going to deal with that. We need what we call the number E. Now, I said the number E. Most times when we deal with letters in here, those letters are variables, like T is a variable for a number of years. P is a variable standing for your principal. Right. But on rare occasions, numerical values for really important numerical values, we utilize a letter for those numerical values. And the number E is one of those times. It's kind of like pi. Pi is a letter in the Greek alphabet. E is a letter and it stands for a number. Now, every calculator has an E on it. I should say every calculator that you have for this class, whether you have the TI-30 or whether you have the TI-84, there is the E on it. On the TI-30, I'll show you this in a second. It's on the left-hand side. But essentially, it is approximately 2.7. Wait, let me write that down. Seven, one, eight, two, eight. And it just keeps going and going and going. All right. Now, where this comes from is something you could see if you go into calculus. If you go into calculus, you'll figure out a concept of limits. And it turns out the limit as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger of 1 plus 1 over x to the x power, that's where this E comes from, All right? Again, that's not something you need to know, know by heart or anything like that. The reason I write this down, notice where the M is located here. With a little bit of rewriting, you can see one plus one over X to the X power. You can kind of algebraically, algebraically manipulate this and see 
that this E, when the M gets really, really big, this expression is going to change into an E. Now, <clears throat> I don't care that you know that. What I care that you, do, you know is this. E is this numerical value. Again, you don't have to memorize the number. It's on our calculator. I'll show you that in a second. E is this numerical value. It is irrational. Okay. It is an irrational number. That means the decimal goes on forever and we don't repeat. So E is an irrational number that's linked to continually compounding growth. And it's so linked to continually compounding growth that when you look in your calculator, you'll see the button in your calculator is e to a power. All right. Let me show you that on both the calculators that I normally use. All right, so on the TI-30, the E is right here. So if I wanted to do E by itself, let's say to the first power, you get that 2.71828. If you want to do E to any other power, you do E to any other power, like E to the fifth would be about that. Okay, so on the TI-30, that's where E is located. On the TI-84, very similarly, it's located right here. So again, if you want to do E, hit second, and then that E button, I have the nice math type on. So E to the first power, again, E to the fifth power, same thing, okay? So that's where the E button is on our calculator. And it's so linked to con continually compounded growth that it already has the exponents in there. It anticipates that when you're using E, you're going to be using exponents. So let's take a look at continually compounding growth and do that, do an example of that. <clears throat> so when we have interest compounded, Continually. Our formula is going to be A equals P, E, and then in the exponent, R times T. Basically, what happens is the one plus. It's going to be hard to do. 1 over m, this part of the formula to the mth power. Okay, that gets changed to an e, and then the r times the t gets left to remain.
By the way, read carefully when you're doing these problems. It says compounding continuously. We're in this formula. If it says compounding m times per year, we're using this formula. Okay. But let's do an example. <clears throat> let's say you invest. Uh, $17,000 into, again, I'll say a stock that grows at 5.35% compounding continuously. How much will you have? And let's do 20 years. Okay. Well, compounding continuously means I use this formula. Five point three five percent is my rate. I need to change that to a decimal, like I always do. Point zero five three five. times a T of 20. Now, if you're writing this in your calculator, you can write it in as one step by putting that rate times T inside of parentheses, or if you have the nice math print, it'll put the 0 0.035, 0535 times 20, all looking like the exponent. But just make sure that this multiplication is in the exponent and you're not taking the exponent and then multiplying by 20 afterwards. But other than that, just take some practice of plugging it into your calculator. Once you do that, you end up with 49,561 dollars and 45 cents. So there you go. That's the whole, the whole deal. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned that I want to mention now is an example like this. Let's say we invest $9,000 into a stock that goes down in price. So that loses, um, let's say it only loses 0.5%. Compounding continuously. So it's losing 0.5% compounding continuously. How much will you have after five years? Well, everything goes into the same. We're compounding continuously, so we're going to use this formula. We're put in 9,000. 
The only thing I have to worry about is my rate. Now, for one, make sure you move the decimal over two spots. So you move it over two spots and that'd be 0 0.005. Hopefully that makes sense. Move that over two spots, you get 0 0.005. Don't get confused about that. But since we're losing, that means the rate is going down. So all you have to do is plug in a negative for your rate. By the way, that same phenomenon would have happened if you compounded M times per year. If you were losing money, losing 3% per year, you do negative 0.03. So when you're losing money or your money is decaying, then all we have to use is a negative R. But here we'll do this. So if you lost a half percent for five years, after five years, your money is going to be at 8,777 and 79 cents. So growth, use a positive R. Decay, use a negative R. That's basically the whole thing. 